Hey, 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 what's up? Ahlam wa bikum. Welcome back to my kitchen and sahtin. I'm very happy to have you here and I hope that you are well today and in good health and staying inside. Today, I would love to share with you a recipe that I've been very excited to shoot for a while, ever since I first created it. It has become really, really popular in my house and I think it will become popular in yours as well. It is a roasted beet and farro salad. I'm calling it a salad because I think it's meant to be eaten cold, but it's not, Salad doesn't feel appropriate for this, but I know that if I went to a cafe and got this, they would call it a salad. It has so many bright flavors going on. It's really fresh. This is a very special recipe and I'm quite proud of it and I'm excited to share it with you. The first thing we gotta do because it's going to take the longest amount of time is roast our beet or beets. I have one very big beet. Beets and root vegetables in general are also a great thing to use right now because they last a long time in the fridge. It's so, so easy to roast beets and really rewarding as well. So first thing you wanna do is wash your beet, which I've done. To bake the beet, we're gonna make a little basket out of two layers of things. We're gonna have a layer of parchment paper and a layer of aluminum foil. I really don't like to put my food directly on aluminum foil. I much prefer to have it only touch parchment paper. So that's why I'm doing that. It also means it's non-stick, it's cleaner. I'm reusing a piece of parchment paper that I heated some bread up on yesterday because it's still clean and it's good and it's quarantine. So we're trying to save our resources. So place your beet in the middle of all of this. Drizzle some grapeseed oil or whatever oil you have and salt all over it and then wrap it in the foil. I also threw a few garlic cloves in there because roasted garlic is wonderful and why not? Make sure that when you buy your beets, they are rock hard and they're not soft at all. After they roast, you'll start to feel that there's a little bit of give. So I'm gonna put this guy in the oven at 400 degrees and probably leave it for one and a half hours, maybe two. Sometimes I like to slow roast it all day at 350. Sometimes it doesn't take that long, but this is a very big beet. Most beet roasting recipes online will tell you that it needs 50 minutes to an hour. I have never found it to take less than an hour. Beets need time and love. And when you wrap them like this, they're not gonna burn easily and they're just gonna get all nice and happy. So let us bring him to his fate. Ta -da. So this, salad is made using farro. It's really one of my favorite things at the moment. It's a really hearty grain that's got a lot of protein and fiber. It's got magnesium, it's got zinc. It's really, really nutritious and it's super versatile. I use it in so many different things. I have had and seen a lot of farro salads that have been really bland and flavorless, which really doesn't do this justice. It's a great grain. Making farro is super easy. It's just like rice. You can use a ratio of about two and a half cups of water to one cup of farro, put it in a pot, bring it to a boil and then simmer it for 30 minutes or so. I like to add a little bit of salt, maybe a little pepper, maybe a little turmeric, a little olive oil. You can do what you like though. Once you cook your farro, this becomes this. I always like to make farro and then eat it throughout the next week with different things. For this dish especially, it's really good to use leftover farro that's coming from the fridge because it's not gonna be super hot and steamy. So the beef that we're roasting is of course gonna be hot, but this salad will get even better with a little bit of time in the fridge. We now have our farro and our beet should be done. It's been about two hours for me because that was a really big beet. We can assemble the salad. Let us begin. We have our beet. Oh dear. It is done. Once this beet is cool enough for you to pick up, you wanna run it under really cold water for a little bit and then we'll get to peeling it. Our beet is still steaming, but it's chilling. But if you look in here, you know what? You need to look, come over here. See, we threw that garlic in there and it roasted beautifully. It's got all this nice beet juice dye on it. Very pretty. It is super, super easy to peel a beet. Once you have rinsed it off in cold water, the skin will just peel off by itself. You can really just yeah, there you go. Just rub it right off here. Now remember, beets are gonna stain a lot, so don't wear a white shirt and uh, just be careful. <laughs> wow, that is really pretty. So now we're just assembling and we're gonna have some fun. So I'm gonna put in 
some farro for this. This is enough just for me for a couple days, so that is fine. Tip, use a plastic cutting board, not a wooden one, when you're cutting beets because they stain everything. I'm just gonna cut this beet into really small cubes, little bite-sized pieces. Ready? <gasps> oh. Perfect. You know it's ready and it's good when it just cuts through so smoothly like that. Oh. Wow, look at that. This is like a, I think this is a different kind of beet that I found. I'm just gonna dice it the way I would dice like an onion, really. Cut it into little chunkies here. My gosh, those colors are gorgeous. <gasps> Oh, it's like a gradient. Y'all, y'all, it's so pretty. Do you see this? Do you see what's happening here? That is so gorgeous. Okay, you need to see it up close. How, that looks like candy. You can cook any root vegetables like this too. Just make a little parchment paper and aluminum foil sack bed for them and it works great. So I'm now gonna add a few sneaky herbs and greens, but first I need to eat one of these garlic cloves. Oh my gosh. I did these just originally as a snack, but I think I'm gonna throw them in there because why not spread the joy, eh? I'm gonna put a bunch of green onions in these, in this rather. If you don't have green onions, but you have chives or you have both, they would, uh, they're both really great in this. I only have green onions today. Then you're not gonna be surprised at all. We're gonna put some dill. We're gonna really finely mince this and put it in just the way that we do with the cabbage salad. I also have some collard greens that I've blanched. This is another thing that I like to prepare at the beginning of the week and then just throw greens into any meal I'm making. We'll separate the leaves from the stems and put them all in the same pot of boiling salty water. The reason I separate the leaves from the stems is because they cook at different amounts of time. So you can pull one out separately from the other until they are as tender as you would like them to be when you eat them. Then once you do that, you can throw them into so many different things. You can throw them into a fried rice, you can throw them into a pasta, you can chop them up really small and put them in anything. And I really like to do that with my greens. Some collard green stems here. I'm just gonna chop them up really finely. I like them to be really fine so the texture is not super different from everything else. They almost disappear into the salad. You could also do this with the leafy greens. I usually do it with the leafy greens. I'm trying it with uh, the stems now. I'm just gonna mix it up and see everything I've got here all together before I add anything else. This is a very, very beautiful and colorful salad and also a very hearty meal. If you threw some cooked chickpeas into this, it would be a very hearty meal. Of course, a good amount of olive oil, probably about a quarter of a cup, and then when you add yogurt, it really brings this together in a beautiful way. And it also turns it a really pretty color. So I'm gonna put two good tablespoons of yogurt ooh, into this. Now we stir and watch it take form. I'm sure you could do this with a vegan yogurt as well. It would probably also be really, really good with an avocado if you have one of those. Just mush it into this. But then it might not last uh, more than a a day or two. This beet is very pastel-y pigmented because look at those colors. I'm going to add a pinch of dry mint because I love dry mint. Pinch of salt because I didn't really salt much before. This definitely likes a little bit of lemon. It also could use some mat. <gasps> Wait, I'm gonna add some mat to this. A little bitty pinch of some mat too because why not? A little bit of garlic powder. Just a little extra garlic, because the roasted garlic is great, but it's a little bit sweeter. Normally I would put just regular crushed garlic in this raw. Stir it up, and you've got something very, very nice. I'm gonna try it. See if it needs anything. Mmm! Yes! Oh, yes! Man, that's good. These, look at these colors. Just take a look. That beautiful color. Isn't that nice? A very easy, very nourishing, hearty little dish 
best eaten cold. I hope that you at least roast a beet sometime very soon and try making this salad. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. It is a big fave of mine and has had very high reviews from my friends. Stay safe, stay indoors, and thank you for watching. It really means a lot that people are enjoying the content I'm putting out because I love so much to share it with you. And please share with me pictures of the food that you make if you use any of my recipes. It really makes my day when I get to see that. As always, sahtin, and I will see you in the next one.